embrace online voting and a great opportunity to, to, to make a difference in, in people's lives. Michael J. Fox offers hope. Tomorrow, more fall sunshine, but rain on the way for the weekend. We begin tonight with two mothers who've been through an agony no mother should have to endure. They've both lost children to prescription drugs sold to them by pushers. Police have laid charges in one case, but in the other, the dealer is still at large. We begin with the mother of Katana McDonald, who's talking candidly about her daughter and the drugs that, that killed her. She was always having fun. Proud mother Wanda Martin shows pictures of her daughter Katana taken just a month before her death in June after an overdose of methadone allegedly bought on the street. Happy memories traded for grief and anger. I can't bring her back. <clears throat> but if we can save this from happening to somebody else, then it's all worth it. Her death won't be in vain. Police say Katana McDonald's death at 21 was no accident. They've charged an acquaintance, Kelsey Leanne Pinch, with criminal negligence causing death and trafficking. I didn't even know that the relationship between the two of them existed. I didn't, when this all happened is when I first even learned about Kelsey and Katana knowing each other. Wanda Martin says Katana, seen here with her stepdad last Christmas, had been living on her own for several years. Her drug use, she thought, was confined to marijuana. This has been going on with her for quite some time. Uh, I had absolutely no idea it had gone any deeper than that. I had no idea that she had even tried anything else until we were in Kempfel Hospital. The courts will decide if the death was a crime. Wanda Martin says one thing must change. People must no longer be allowed to carry methadone away from treatment centers, a practice known as carries. Carry homes have killed Katana. They've killed before Katana, and they're going to kill again. Somebody needs to make a difference. Somebody needs to change. For now, Wanda Martin mourns. She says she'll be in court next month to see the person accused of selling the drugs that killed her daughter. Paul Withers, CBC News, Black River. While police have laid charges in one case, there's still no closure for another mother in Bridgewater. The dealer who sold her son the drugs that killed him is still out there. The CBC's Elizabeth Chu is live with that story. Elizabeth. Tom, I can tell you that Cheryl Jones tonight is not giving up her fight for justice in the prescription drug death of her son, Brandon Wenzel. It has been a long and painful battle. It's been too long, and nobody should have to live what I'm living now or go through what I'm going through. Cheryl Jones wants her nightmare of grief to end. It's been eight months since her son Brandon died after popping a prescription pill, dilaudid, and drinking vodka. She's pressing for criminal charges against the drug dealer. Brandon wasn't prescribed these pills. So yes, there is a person responsible for this. And I think they should take responsibility for their actions. He did. He took full responsibility for his actions. He died. And that's not fair to have somebody take it out of my life. That injustice has propelled Jones to do her own detective work. From the gritty streets to the dark corners of the Internet, she finds pictures like this of the drug dealing she blames for Brandon's death. She feeds police tips, officers now searching for two people who have information. Police haven't been able to find them. I stand still now without these two people. Well, I, that's, that's certainly correct, unless, unless uh, your broadcast here today brings forth somebody new. And, that, and that's the thing, the, this prescription, the, the whole issue of prescription uh, drug abuse in Nova Scotia has been, been uh, uh, certainly front and center with the media a lot lately. And each and every time that, that, that that's in the media, there is the possibility that someone somewhere may have an epiphany and come forward and, and decide that they want to, to uh, help out, help the police bring some closure to some of these families. That's what Jones is desperately seeking. I think as time goes on, it gets easier, but I don't, it doesn't get easy for me, and especially with this open book. It's not easy. 
it gets harder. And until that book gets closed, it's going to remain hard until they find out who's responsible for his death. Now, police say this case will stay open until they've talked to those two individuals. They are not suspects, per se, so warrants have not been issued for their arrest. They're obviously pretty good at being avoided or avoiding detection by police. So this case remains at a dead end tonight. Tom. All right, thanks, Elizabeth. Elizabeth Chu in our newsroom tonight.